Hey guys, I'm Mike Sabunchi with the Super Street Network. We're here in beautiful streets of Willow in Rosamount, California for the 2014 Tuner GP. Hey guys. Tuner GP is a two-day event where we have a track day and we have a dyno day. Today is the first of the two events and that being the track day, we're going to go through a few different runs of the day. The competitors are going to get some practice runs and then they're going to get some timed runs. For the time sessions, you got one warm-up lap, three hot laps, and one cool-down lap. So you got to make every lap count. We have almost every car you can think of here today. We got a Fiat, we got Mercedes, we got Audis, we got tons of Beamers. The field is stacked. I can't wait to see what the action has in store for us. For the 2014 European Car Tuner GP, we will be checking in with Platform AG, European Auto Source, 034 Motorsports, and Joe DeVivo in his Fiat 500 Abarth. The way that this chassis is laid out. I mean, it's just standard front wheel drive. Uh, nice thing about it is no torque steer whatsoever on this. It is, it is taller than it is wide, so it does make it uh, very interesting when you're on the track. Uh, changes the dynamic of it completely. It's probably one of the, even though it's, it's not terribly fast, it's definitely one of the more difficult and technical cars that I've driven. Yeah, track day was good. Uh, initially, we had some issues with the traction control not, not shutting off all the way. Once I was able to get that shut off and get, get a few things reset and get it turned off we cut dropped it by two seconds uh, i expect a little bit better time but you know all in all with the way it was set up and the temperature and the tires uh 135 not bad Uh, we're in the 2,500 pound range right now. There are a few things I can do to make it lighter. Uh, we can run carbon door skins, a carbon roof skin, pull the windows out of it. We have full motors right now with glass. Uh, of course, removing that is going to save a little bit sound deadening. Uh, switching glass out to Lexan would help quite a bit, and carbon fiber hatch or hood. And that would probably get us down to the mid-2300 range. The weight of a racing vehicle is one of the most important things that a crew is worried about. The lighter the vehicle, typically the better the performance is going to be. And the reasons for that are simple. If you have a lighter weight vehicle, it can do almost everything better. It can accelerate quicker, decelerate quicker, it can also turn left and right more agile. The thing about that is, if we have a lighter weight vehicle, it takes less power to move it as well. So racers are always trying to lighten their vehicle up. There's two forms of weight you'll hear most racers talking about, sprung weight and unsprung weight. Sprung weight basically is any of the weight of the vehicle that's supported by the vehicle's road springs. Unsprung weight has to do with rotating mass and the parts of the vehicle that support the weight. Examples of sprung weight include the body itself, the driver, the engine, seats, things of that nature. Examples of unsprung weight are the actual road springs themselves, things like axles, hubs, brakes, bearings, and rims and tires. There's been plenty of fast cars out here today. In the open practice sessions, the fastest car was the Platform AG BMW. They got into the 123 range. That's really fast for this track. This 2014 Tuner GP, it's our best result out of the past three years, and it's always fun for us. It's still fun to be out here with all the other shops, enthusiasts, and a day at the track, a day at the dyno. It's always, we always look forward to this event every year. We specialize in a lot of track use and have a lot of race background, so the alignment is uh, aggressive for the track. There isn't a lot of tire wear once it's set up properly. With the proper alignment, you can't have aggressive track alignment without it completely chewing up your tires. When people talk about how a vehicle is tuned, very often they're talking about the engine. 
But just as important, or in some cases even more important, is the suspension tuning. Now, when someone is setting up a vehicle for different types of track conditions, the actual tune of the suspension, the alignment angles, the setup of the chassis and suspension, makes a huge difference in how that vehicle is going to get around that track and get good traction. One of the most important alignment angles that a chassis and suspension tuner has to figure out is his toe setting. Well, what is the toe setting? Well, if you're looking at an actual tire on the vehicle, this is front or rear tires, the leading edge of the tires, if the leading edge is tilted inward, that's considered toe in. If those leading edges of the tires are tilted outward, that's considered toe out. Oftentimes, at events like this at Hero GP, a lot of racers with two-wheel drive vehicles say they prefer having the front suspension set up with a little bit more toe in than they normally might run. The idea behind that is, is the vehicle tends to be more stable at high speeds. Now there's a resulting increased tire wear, but it's worth the trade-off for that stability. The car we brought this year is a 2006 Audi A3 Quattro. Uh, the car is actually our uh, director of engineering's daily driver. It has uh, all production parts on it, including our VR6 3.2 liter turbo kit. Uh, I guess what's unique about this car is the fact that it's not that unique. Uh, in the past, we've always brought really highly customized vehicles. Uh, we've built cars for this competition specifically. Uh, so this is the first year we really brought a, a, a pretty relatively mundane but special car with uh, you know, very accessible modifications that uh, anyone could do if they wanted to themselves. O34 without proper testing managed to squeeze out a 128.727 as a lap time. The most common oiling system we find in passenger vehicles is called the wet system. That system basically is like a straw down in an oil pan, which is a reservoir at the bottom of the engine. And basically there's an oil pump that's sucking up that oil like through that straw and then distributing it throughout the engine to keep the components cool and keep them lubricated. A dry sump oiling system doesn't have that reservoir that's so deep underneath the engine. The beauty about that is, is that we can have the oil reservoir someplace else in the vehicle. That means we can lower the engine in the chassis. The components of a dry sump oiling system are a lot different than on a wet sump oiling system. Instead of the oil pump being inside the engine block, a lot of times there's a separate scavenging pump that's crank driven. It can be a single stage or more stages. But regardless of how many stages that system is, the oil is usually stored in a separate larger reservoir away from the engine block. And that has certain advantages. Events like the Euro GP place a lot of G-forces on the vehicle as it's going through corners. In a traditional wet sump system, the oil would want to slosh away from the oil pickup. That isn't like that on a dry sump system. On a dry sump system, because we store the oil remotely and have a separate scavenging pump, the oil supply will always be at the ready to keep that engine alive and cool regardless of the G-forces placed on it. It is true that dry sump oiling systems are usually more costly and a lot more complex. But if you're going to be competing at a higher level, you might want to make that investment. Platform AG in their M3 sedan had the fastest time of the day, 123.479. Day two takes place at Church Automotive for dyno testing. Each competitor gets to keep the best of two clean runs for their dyno numbers. One of the first cars on the dyno was Amir Bentitu with his 1997 E36 M3.
He managed to squeeze out 269 horsepower out of this 17-year-old daily driver. Next up, we have European Autosource with their 2015 BMW M4. This is our 2015 BMW F82 M4. Um, right now it has pretty much all the bolt-ons you can have for it. Everything's off the shelf. We have a lot of the BMW M performance parts for the, uh, the Aero. We have some Apex wheels, Brembo brakes. We have the Akrapovich full exhaust system, some Evolution Raceworks downpipes. Uh, we have a JB4 tuner, KW Club Sports. So it's all off the shelf parts, but very high end bolt on equipment. So. They put down a very respectable 564 wheel horsepower. We have a DinoJet chassis dyno uh, at our shop. Uh, on this one, we saw about the same amount of horsepower. We we're expecting a little more on this sort of setup, but due to uh, some of the issues, we had to tune back the car a little bit, and uh, we only got about 550 torque this time. Topping the charts on the dyno day was 034 Motorsports putting down 615 wheel horsepower out of their turbocharged VR6 Audi A3 Quattro. All right, so it's time for us to wrap up our 2014 Tuner GP dyno day. There has been a few different stories going on here that are pretty interesting. First and foremost, 034 Motorsports put down an impressive 615 wheel horsepower out of an Audi A3. That's insane. Uh, secondly, the guy with the second lowest dyno number of the day actually ended up putting up the second fastest time of the day at the track. So it goes to show you that power isn't everything. Your overall winner for the 2014 European Car Tuner GP is Platform AG with the fastest lap time of the competition at 123.479 and the third highest dyno number with 549 wheel horsepower. It's always good to win, but it's more fun just to be out here, other shops, you know, see what everyone brings and see how we do, see how everyone else does. But yeah, generally it's, it's more fun than anything. And it's, you know, it's good press and good media. That wraps it up for the 2014 European Car Tuner GP. We can't wait to see you guys next year. Honestly, uh, it was more of a joke, I'm Italian, and uh, I figured, you know what, Fiat's coming back. I had just come back from vacation in Italy, and I uh, figured, you know, that'd be something fun to play with. I just tell everybody I have an image to uphold. Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> Next time he comes by, I'm going to flash him. I wonder if maybe that'll improve or slow down. I don't know. Ah!